everybody. I'm here with Mike of M2 App Insight. Uh, Mike, would you mind introducing the company and a little bit about yourself? Yeah, M2 App Insight, uh, we're a two and a half year old company uh, owned by M2 Catalyst, but our primary product is M2 App Insight. Um, the company is about 25 people. We're focused on analytics uh, and focusing on a different form of analytics uh, for the marketplace to help improve retention, uh, customer retention based on some sort of new metrics and performance metrics. So you talk a little bit about those new metrics. So many of the companies we see are really focused on what are users doing in the app, what are they clicking on, how long, how long they're in the app, but uh, you guys are in kind of a totally different set. What, what are some of the metrics you yeah, track? We, we focus um, the retention so often, in, especially in the Android marketplace, has to do with how your, your app is performing with respect to battery or CPU or memory or storage. Uh, oftentimes we're seeing customers um, leaving applications due to poor performance on signal strength. Uh, so it's not only Wi-Fi signal strength, it could be carrier signal strength. So we're looking at all of these different metrics uh, from a performance perspective. And when we've built this database um, that we can provide free reports for app developers uh, from the database and they can see how their apps are performing against uh, similar apps within their category. So that really helps. Do you think consumers, I would guess that a lot of the expectation these days is that apps perform well. Why do you think that is? Well, the, the consumers expect the apps to perform well, and when they don't, they uninstall very quickly. So you hear interesting statistics that, you know, 80% of the con consumers will install, uninstall an app within the first week. And so often the app developers think, oh, that's, you know, you know, I paid all this money for all this advertising. It's due to the user interface. And within the Android marketplace, we've, we're tracking 16,000 uh, different Android device types. So it's very, very difficult within the Android marketplace uh, to get an app that really performs very well. And what you're seeing is, especially as you go into you know, third world countries and foreign markets, or you're going after smaller U, you know, consumers that are on smaller US carriers, they're stripping down these devices uh, to hit very, very, very low price points. So on Android, you get these entry level devices that have very low CPU processing power, very low memory storage capabilities. Uh, so oftentimes the uninstall has nothing to do with the user interface. It has to do with how those apps are performing on low-end devices or on low-end networks or people that are in fringe coverage, as an example. So when should developers start thinking about these kind of metrics? Is this something that you know comes once you've launched and you have a bunch of users, or, or when would you advise a developer to get started with I, this? I, I think the sooner the better, and we can. One of the things that we'll be doing is we're we're publishing uh, all the different category averages, uh, so consumers for free can see, or I'm sorry, app developers for free can see how their apps are performing against similar apps within their category. And when I say category averages, uh, within Google Play there's 45 categories, for example, and within the game category there's 17 subcategories. So the way an arcade game, you know, versus a, you know, multimedia game, you know, like Legend or, you know, one of the, or Subway Surfer that has a lot of multimedia, uh, performs one is going to use a lot more battery than another um, and then for a social networking application these social networking applications one is going to use more data than another so we found the most useful thing for app developers is to look at similar apps within their category and say okay how much battery memory CPU storage etc should we be using but then also they need to look at foreground usage versus background usage because a lot of apps continue to run in the background. And if they're running in the background, um, you know, if it's a communication app, it might need to run in the background. So how much data, how much battery is being used while it's being run in the background? And then there are task killers out there. So if the task killer keeps finding that your, your system or your application is running in the background and using too much battery, people start killing that app, then they uninstall it. So the consumers or the app developers really need to think about this very, very early on 
um, in order to help improve their retention. And much of it is very, very simple modifications they need to do to improve their performance. And if I were to read a report and notice that mine was performing significantly better or worse, are there any kind of tools that are out there that could help? Uh, there, there are tools uh, like the AT&T Arrow product uh, is a great one. Um, and the, the, one of the main developers, Doug Sillers, behind the Arrow product has actually just written a book on app resource optimization. So it's a free tool from AT&T. Arrow stands for App Resource Optimization. He's just published his book this week and a lot of interesting little tips on how to improve app performance. One of which, for example, I mean, if you're continuously turning on the GPS, you know, if you're a location-based app, that's gonna drain a tremendous amount of battery. Um, there are other things that you need to really be aware of. How often do you ping the network? So if you're constantly pinging the network every three minutes for awareness of location, that is gonna start draining the battery. And you're draining the battery in the background, the task killers are gonna come up, that the consumers install, and they're gonna uninstall your application. So there's, that's one particular tool, but there are others available as well. Yeah, that's great. So what's been uh, the most exciting thing about mobile for you over the past couple of years? Um, exciting thing about mobile I mean that's that's kind of a an open-ended question but I think it's the the proliferation of interesting uh, creative applications we meet with these entrepreneurs all the time uh, in what we do and app developers are constantly talking to us and it seems to be sort of an endless stream of creative entrepreneurial things and it's only escalating further now that we've got wearables that we've got people creating you know, amazing applications. We were at the AT&T Developers Conference and there was a, a room of 2,000 hackers uh, for the hackathon and we had a team in that hackathon and the energy and buzz and creative things that they were doing was just amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So now looking ahead, uh, where do you think mobile's gonna go in 2015? What's the big thing to come? Uh, I, I think wearables are, are gonna be a very, very interesting um, acceleration uh, and then IOT, Internet of Things, um, and everything seems to still be centralized around the smartphone. So it was interesting as we were talking to all these people with all the wearables and sensors, you know, they're saying, hey, on my smartphone, if I, if I put sensors, you know, all over the house uh, and I have different sensors that are out there, I want to be able to control, I want to be able to pull up my smartphone and see, you know, should I turn down the thermostat? Uh, you know, on the house, or uh, we're meeting with one guy with his, his watch app, he can open and shut the refrigerator door, all the doors in the house, oh, wow. just from a smartphone, you know, so, um, you know, or from a smart watch, you mm -hmm. know, so that'll be interesting too, to see how many people, can, as they're starting to put SIMs within the watch, how many people are going to be starting to use watches or the big bands on the, on the right. wrist as the entire phone. So there'll be a lot of interesting developments and the wave of innovations are, we call them waves because they're just gonna keep coming just like at the beach, you know? Right. <laughs> there's, there's not gonna be any slowdown in waves of innovation for the foreseeable future. Well, thank you so much for doing this, I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, we appreciate it and we appreciate the support of the App Developers Alliance. We're a member and we're very excited to do the continued support, so keep up the great work. Well, thank you. Thank you. Visit appalliance.org to access resources and join a global network of developers.